Hello to all our Facebook friends. Welcome to our Cat at Home series. My name is Ryan Block. I am the product specialist with Caterpillar. I specialize in the forestry industry. We're joining you today from our homes. The video series is meant to give you a way to continue to learn about cat equipment from our product experts, from my home to your home. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about forestry. Also with me is Jaden Cool to discuss the industrial industry and we'll finish with Clay Lane covering the waste industry. We ask that your questions be put in the comments. We will do our best to respond in real time as they come in. If you are watching this on replay, keep those comments coming. We will continue to check back and answer them. Also, don't forget to check back in next week. Uh, we will be covering the CAT app and our customer value agreements. All right, let's get started. Caterpillar has been focused on providing purpose-built specialty configurations for our forestry customers since 1927. Our CAT machines have been utilized in log loading and moving, wood extraction and processing, mill yards, road building needs during those 90 plus years. CAT's focus on quality, reliability, serviceability, durability, and performance for our CAT forestry machines is still emphasized today like it has been throughout the history of our products. Our CAT track type loaders and track type tractors have been working the forestry applications along us roughly 90 years. CAT wheel loaders have been moving logs and working in milliard applications for over 50 years. And CAT forestry excavators or FEX <clears throat> have a strong history of 40 years in various forestry applications. These machines represent the core of CAT's product lineup and will continue to have a strong focus on ensuring these machines maximize our customers' productivity and performance needs going forward. A little bit about the application. Uh, again, we serve various applications. Cat forestry machines provide uh, road building. Uh, in there, the cat machines assist with creating haul roads to and from job sites. A lot of the forestry access or haul roads sometimes connect remote areas to existing township, county, or state roads, requiring various machines to successfully complete the task. Cat machines typically utilized in these applications can include track type tractors or loaders, motor graders, haul trucks, excavators, and wheel loaders. Moving on to felling and processing, this is the process of cutting down the trees, delimbing them, and cutting the trees into logs. Cat's purpose-built forestry machines have now been transitioned over to Weiler, but cat dealers still assist with the needs of this application. Extraction, the next area, is, involves the process of cutting timber from the origin origin growth place to a point where it can be removed from site. One of the most used is the track type tractors, again with nearly 90 years of extraction from timber from job sites. Since then, purpose-built forestry equipment was developed to improve the efficiency in the extraction of the timber, especially in tight or steep work areas. Processing can occur at various stages throughout the forestry process of timbering. As mentioned previously, the first area is felling and processing. It occurs any time the timber is moved from one area to the other. There's a potential that some customers may utilize our cat forestry excavators or material handler in the processing phases. Loading is very self-explanatory. Loading and unloading of logs and timber throughout the process. This occurs from the origin point of extraction and continues right through the timbers arriving at a mill yard. The loading and unloading varies in use from wheel loaders with forestry forks, material handlers with grapples, or forestry excavators with our log loading grapples. Mill yard applications also vary greatly on just one job site. The logs or timber are converted into their final products at mill yards, whether that be wood chips, boards, plywood, or more. Tasks at mill yards range from loading and unloading, sorting and storing, stacking and feeding, recycling and cleanup. Cat Milliard machines can work together as a synchronized team to provide our Milliard customers with a total line of purpose-built solutions to get the job done. Lastly, management can vary again from job site to job site, Milliard to Milliard. These applications also include a mix of Cat BCP and GCI products to ensure the job is getting done. Our product lineup for Cat Forestry uh, starts with our Cat Forestry excavators, the 538 through the 568. Our cat forestry excavators are the most productive forest machines we produce. They're designed to move trees, dirt, debris faster to maximize application productivity. Our forestry excavators include more hydraulic power, fuel efficient engine systems, extensive visibility from the operator friendly cab, and low effort precision controls. 
Various work tools also allow you to equip this machine to meet your specific forestry needs. CAT features purpose-built wheel loaders for the forestry industry with the 938M all the way through the 990K. CAT Forestry wheel loaders feature heavy-duty cylinders, additional counterweight, a wide range of work tools, and additional options based on forestry customer needs. Our CAT Forestry wheel loaders deliver sustainable productivity, fuel efficiency, ease of serviceability, and operator comfort. CAT also features our material handlers for the forestry industry, beginning with the MH3024 and continuing through our new MH3040. The new CAT MH3040 material handler builds upon the legacy of our M325D. The material handler provides power and reliability that, that you need for your forestry application. The new MH3040 features a new cab, up to 25% reduction in fuel costs, and up to a 20% reduced maintenance costs. Our material handlers also accept a variety of work tools to meet your specific forestry needs. Lastly, let's finish where it all began, our track type tractor product family. Cat dozers for forestry begin with our D3 and continue through the D10. Cat dozers feature updated sweeps designed to help protect your machine from damage and debris buildup. They also feature a pre-cleaner and roof-mounted filter to help protect against debris and dust. Cat forestry dozers have specialized track shoes plus wood chip blades matched to do the job required. With that, we will now flip it over to Jaden Cool, who will focus on the industrial segment. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jaden Cool. I'm the application specialist for the industrial market, hydromechanical work tools and hammers. Uh, today, like Ryan, I'm going to cover what we offer for some of our specialty markets in the industrial segment. Uh, to start, uh, for a little background, um, Caterpillar has been in the industrial market for years. While our standard machines have been used um, in all these type of applications for almost as long as we've been around, like demolition, uh, we do make industry-specific machines purpose-built for these applications. A uh, couple examples of this on the screen uh, from the 80s. We introduced a full line of demolition machines such as the 325 to 85 UHD. Uh, the 90s, we entered the work tool attachment market with a full lineup of fabricated work tools like buckets, couplers, thumbs, uh, but also hammers and hydromechanical tools like uh, multiprocessors, shears, and grapples. Um, also in the 90s, we started building purpose-built wheel loaders and material handlers. Um, these loaders, for example, were designed from the ground up for these markets. They're not just a base loader with extra features added on the machine after it was already built. Uh, if we look at the applications at a high level uh, that we cover in the industrial segment, um, from left to right, we'll start with uh, demolition. So demolition, as the name suggests, we have the machines and attachments to help bring structures down and process the material on site, whether that's taking down a bridge, overpass, office complexes, stadiums, high rises, et cetera. Um, scrap recycling markets, uh, we have the machines and tools to assist in sizing, sorting, and processing different types of materials, which, which include ferrous and non-ferrous metals and scrap recycling operations, or even other operations like uh, tire recycling, for instance. Ports waterways, we have machines and tools to help assist in applications like dredging waterways, assisting with loading and unloading ships and barges. Um, we also have CAT Command. It's a remote control solution that either by line of sight or using like a remote universal station allows you to control the equipment remotely without having to put a person in the machine. Uh, for example, uh, you know, putting a person in the machine for example, in the bottom of a ship cargo hold to unload material. Uh, industrial processing, uh, we've got machines and tools to help handle material kind of outside the normal aggregate, like uh, ha handling slag in a steel mill. And then uh, finally, uh, with utilities, you know, we have machines like our wheel and track dozers. They have different blade uh, uh, styles to help with stockpile management, such as like a coal pile or wood chip pile. So if we look at, uh, to highlight some of our in industry specific machines and work tools, um, we'll start with our specialty excavators up on the top left. Um, the first we have our 340 straight boom. Uh, this machine's perfect for demolition. It's based on our 336 uh, standard machine, but it has a heavier counterweight and heavy duty undercarriage. So instead of a bent boom, that's more for an earth moving application, we have a straight boom to help gain extra reach. So versus a normal like 336 uh, standard excavator, this machine gives the operator about another 10 feet of reach, which can be an extra story or story at and a half in a demolition job. Um, next, we have our uh, 340F and 352 UHD excavators, uh, which stands for ultra high demolition, or some people call it a high reach. Um, the 340F has a UHD boom with a max pin height of 72 feet, and our 352 has a max pin height of 91 feet, and both can carry a work tool around 8,000 pounds. Uh, both machines have a retro boom available, which can be swapped from the UHD boom in a matter of about 15 to 20 minutes with a couple people. 
Uh, the retro boom looks like a normal standard excavator boom, but it can be put in either a bent position for like earth moving applications or a straight position for demolition applications. Uh, next, we have our 340 and 352 LRE or long reach machines. Uh, these machines are purpose built for this application. They have reinforced structures, heavier counterweight, high wide, heavy duty undercarriages. So the fronts of these machines are for like dredging or clean outs and they got reaches up to 65 feet and they can dig up to around 43 feet. And finally, with our specialty excavators, we do have frontless options. Uh, this is options available on all of our excavators, whether it's a standard machine or even the specialty machines like the UHD. So if your application is unique, you need a custom front for that application, whether it be like a track material handler, a smaller or larger UHD machine, um, this allows you to do that. Next, we have our attachments and work tools on the top right. Uh, we got a long list of attachments for these applications. We have dedicated scrap and demolition shears. Uh, we have multiprocessors that have up to six different jaw types for different applications, and those jaws can be swapped out in a matter of five to 10 minutes. Uh, we have two hammer lines. We have kind of our industry standard everyday gas fire GC hammer and our top of the line oil fire performance hammer. Uh, we have different types of grapples for different applications. We got demo and sorting grapples used primarily in demolition. We have a contractor grapple also used in demolition. And we also have an orange peel grapple that's used for sizing and sorting material, usually like a scrap or a cycling facility. Uh, we have diff many different types of fabricated tools. Um, we got couplers and buckets, um, but we also have many other tools that are not shown on the screen, kind of like thumbs. So moving on to our material handler line, um, similar to like what Ryan mentioned, we have uh, four different models that can be configured with different tools. We got orange peel grapples, demo and sorting grapples, and these also have gen set options for magnets. Uh, the MH3040, which we just launched a few weeks ago, replaces uh, the M325 DMH, which was a very popular model in the scrap, applica <coughs> scrap application. Um, and like I said, we just launched that a few weeks ago. And lastly, with our specialty loaders, um, you know, our track and wheel loaders, we have industrial packages that are built into the machine from the ground up, and they're, they're not like an afterthought or an aftermarket package that's bolted onto a standard loader. Um, these include items like built-in guarding, heavier duty components like ladders and platforms. Uh, we have got packages to help uh, protect against corrosion, whether it's in a port with salt water or like a fertilizer application. Um, we do make loaders specific for the steel mill industry with extra thick plating and guarding, uh, reinforced platforms that accommodate fire suppression systems, uh, and thermal wrapping or stainless steel braided hoses to protect us against high heat inherent with the slag handling. So that's kind of a quick look um, kind of at the industrial segment. Um, I see there's a couple questions. Um, you know, what types of thumbs do you offer for CAD excavators? Um, we have up to four, depending on the model of excavator. Um, so to kind of just a high level, uh, we have a manual or stiff link thumb that an operator has to get out and manually put in position. Uh, we, have, uh, we have three different types of hydraulic thumbs. Um, uh, the most cost effective entry um, level is the utility thumb. It's just a weld on assembly to the bottom of the stick. Um, and that thumb can is about as wide as the bottom of the stick and can uh, move up to about 50% of the rotation um, of that of the uh, the bucket rotation. Uh, we have two uh, pro thumbs. Um, we have the pro or no link pro thumb, and uh, that one can uh, rotate up to 70% of the bucket rotation. And then we have our link pro thumb or the pro plus as we call it, and that thumb can move up to about 100% of the bucket rotation. And then the other question of uh, what size generators. Um, so for our smaller material handlers, the 22, 24, and 26, um, those you have a 15 kilowatt generator, or you can put a 15 kilowatt generator on it. And then our new MH3040, um, it, it uh, has an option of a 20 kilowatt generator. So if there's any other questions, um, I'll hand this over to Clay Lane to talk about waste. And I am the... Uh waste uh, application specialist at Caterpillar. And we're gonna talk uh, talk a little bit about the waste industry and as another specialty industry that Caterpillar is involved in. So a little bit about the history of uh, Cat and the Waste uh, Group. Moving on to the next slide, right? There we go. So when we look at our waste solutions, Cat's focused on providing purpose-built specialty configurations for our waste customers over the years. We can trace that back all the way back to the 1920s in an instance where when the waste industry became mechanized, it had cat machines in there. And one example is the city of Dallas. They took a five ton uh, caterpillar that pulled a 12, uh, 12 yard uh, load of waste in a uh, in a cart to the uh, Dallas burning pit in less than 30 minutes from uh, collection points that were three miles away. When they started doing that, they reduced the cost of that hauling system from uh, $2 a cubic yard to just a fraction over 25 cents a cubic yard. So substantial de decrease in what it costs to uh, 
move that waste. And that's something that CAT has been focused on ever since the 1920s. We're always looking at that waste industry and how to provide a solution to our customers to not only reduce their own and operating costs of that machine, but also to help them become more efficient in that waste industry. Continuing on, when we look at uh, in 1972, Caterpillar produced the world's first landfill compactor. Um, we were the first manufacturer to produce a landfill compactor. Um, it was the 826 uh, size machine. And since then we've built on, we have a 816, we have the 826, and our largest one is the 836, but we're continuously moving on, looking at uh, ways to enhance that machine, ways to enhance compaction in the industry, in the landfill, and to help our customers become more profitable. Uh, next slide, please, Ryan. Okay, looking at the uh, industry a as a whole, here's uh, some of the um, waste uh, industries that CAT's involved in. Our waste energy, right now, waste energy, we're seeing where you can uh, take uh, some of your waste, dehydrate it, uh, re reduce it down into uh, dehydrated pellets, put those in cement kilns, coal and gas fired plants, use that as energy. That's about 5% of the uh, waste that's generated that goes to a waste energy facility. We also have composting facilities. And then we got transfer station of MRFs. And basically a transfer station of MRF is garbage in, it's garbage out. We, we wanna reduce the amount of uh, trucks on the highway. So your residential trucks, which are usually smaller, they go pick up the trash, take it to the transfer station, they dump it. And then a, a cat wheel loader or um, material handler will take that waste and load it in bigger trucks and send it out to the landfill. The landfill is where the uh, bulk of our, our waste goes. And basically a landfill works in the way of you're permitted for a certain uh, elevation. Once you achieve that elevation, that landfill then is shut down. So the most important commodity that we have at the landfill or the, what we want to say what we're selling is airspace. So the highest density I can get per cubic yard, the better off that landfill is and the longer I can keep that landfill operational. So thinking of those uh, different uh, industries, let's talk about some of the equipment that we'll, we'll see. Uh, Ryan, next slide. So in the, uh, in the landfill, we got our D5s and our D9s, right? So the, the idea behind these machines are, number one, they're purpose-built, is the idea is that we're going to spread that waste. We're going to push with the, with the dozer. He's going to spread it to that desired layer, layer depth, and then the compactor is going to come in, come in behind him and run over that waste and get that compaction. Um, our, as far as our, our D, D5 through D9 size machines, we've been making purpose-built machines since the 90s with those machines. And, and when I say purpose-built, we've got guarding on there to protect the duoco and seals on the final drives. We've got special types of uh, undercarriage and tracks to, that will push that waste out of the track so it doesn't build up there in, inside the uh, undercarriage and cause you know, damage that undercarriage. We've got guarding for our pivot shafts. We've got uh, specialty uh, designed cooling packages to reduce the uh, the opportunity for overheating in the uh, in the landfill because of the different contaminants and dust uh, that you'll see in that environment. We've got uh, on our material handler line, like Jaden and Ryan talked a little bit about, we've got wheeled excavators, 316 size and above. We've got our new material handlers that are 3022, 3024, 3026s. You're going to see these a lot in your transfer stations and they're going to load trucks. They're going to pick through. They're going to sort, you know, for that material that maybe that's in that MRF or that material recovery facility where we want to pull those recyclables, recyclables out. We also have uh, our new G300 series uh, waste grapples, and that's going to help in that sorting process. We've got track loaders, 953, 963, 973 size track loader that's specifically designed for that waste environment. Excavators, 315 to a 349 size. You're going to see those in the landfill uh, load and cover soil on articulated trucks. For the end of the day cover, you're going to see them inside the transfer stations as well, working to load trucks and sort. Wheel loaders, once again, going back to that 1990s time frame, specialty built wheel loaders that go into the waste industry as well as into that uh, industrial industry as well. But once again, specific guarding for the machine. Um, things to keep the operator safe inside the cab. When we talk about our waste machines, we got our advanced cabin filtration system. 
that has the same filtering capabilities as the N95 mask that we're hearing so much about. So now, not only am I keeping that machine to uh, withstand the elements of the waste industry, I'm also keeping that operator safe inside the cab too and giving him a good filtration system. And then looking at our landfill compactors, um, our 816, our 83, up to our 836, and we got an 826 in, in between there. Our uh, 816 compactor, that's going to get us about 1,200 pounds per cubic yard when I looked at three or four passes in that landfill. On a 26, I can get about 1,550 uh, 100 pounds per cubic yard uh, with a 26. And then on my 36, I'm looking at about 1,800 pounds per cubic yard of density. And just like we said before, it's all about density in the landfill and consuming airspace and keeping our airspace to a minimum. So I can prolong the life of that landfill. All right, next slide, Ryan. And then looking at some of the machines here, we got a full line of support machines as well. We got our motor graders and they're gonna do uh, my haul road maintenance and to keep uh, prolong the life of the machines, you know, the trucks coming in. Um, looking at uh, cell construction, I got specialty, special hauling. We got the gas energy, trenching, cleanup. Those are all the applications that we're gonna be doing inside that landfill. But looking at those support machines, big thing I'll touch on right there is your articulated trucks and scrapers. But the articulated truck was gonna haul our cover soil, but we also have an ejector style uh, articulated truck where it's got a uh, an apron that just kind of pushes that dirt out the back or that material out the back, doesn't tip anymore. So now I can dump on the go, I can dump on a slope, I can back up and dump in reverse, or I can, you know, stop and push everything out and do just like the tipper. We got specialized haulers. You'll see that third picture where we can put a, a specialty box on there to haul waste from where it's dumped up to the landfill because waste is so light, I can put a bigger box on that articulated truck frame and I can haul more material up to the working face. I got my vibratory rollers for my haul road maintenance and cell, cell building, telehandlers, soil stabilizers. We got backhoe loaders running around in the landfill, we got our skid steer loaders. And then we also got our methane gas engines or our generators where we're pulling methane gas out of that landfill, powering those generators. And then that waste company, that, that landfill can turn around and sell that, that electricity that it generates right back to the power company. And it's gonna power homes throughout the year. And so now they're gonna make money on selling that electricity back from that methane gas. Next slide, Ryan. Any questions? That's a brief overview of uh, the waste industry and what what Caterpillar uh, does in the waste industry. Once again, we got a we offer a wide range of solutions to our customers in that uh, transfer station, landfill, anything to do with waste. And overall, when we think about waste in the U.S. alone, it's a sixty eight billion dollar a year industry. So it's a substantial part of our our everyday life in the in the waste industry. So any questions? Bring them our way. All right. Well, we don't see any questions. Uh, definitely, you know, continue to submit the questions. We will continue to check back and answer them as they come in, especially if you're watching this on replay. Uh, but on behalf of myself, Jaden, and Clay, we thank you for your time today. Uh, hopefully, you learned a little bit about the forestry, industrial, and waste segment. Uh, don't forget to check back next week. Uh, we will be having another session that will focus on our CAD app as well as our customer value agreements. Uh, so we hope that you come and join for that. Other than that, we hope everybody has a great afternoon. And again, thank you for joining us here at CAD at Home. Thank you.